Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on a gorgeous Monday afternoon. This opening week game is brought to you by Chevrolet. After long, hard, bitter cold winter, we've got emerald green grass, azure blue skies, and Pittsburgh Pirates baseball as they take on the Detroit Tigers. It is opening day at PNC Park. Glad you're with us, everybody, along with Steve Blass. I'm Tim Neverett. The Buckos wearing their home whites, getting set to play the Tigers. An interleague matchup for opening day, Steve, but it is opening day. The North Shore has been buzzing all morning. It is an incredible atmosphere here at PNC Park, and I know you've been to a lot of opening days. It just never gets old, does it? It absolutely never gets old. We've got the best look you could possibly have. We're looking down not only at our city, which is gorgeous, but this beautiful, pristine ballpark. The team's lined up on the foul lines. You've got the color guard. You've got the national anthem. You've got a huge American flag. It is a snapshot in your mind that just makes it all good. Third member of our broadcast team, Robbie Inchmikowski, is standing by downstairs with a guy who may be looking at his final opening day with A.J. Burnett. Robbie? Well, A.J. Burnett set for his final campaign in Major League Baseball. A.J., take a look around. What comes to mind when you see all this? Um, home. You know, home, uh, coming out of the anthem uh, while they're singing it, looking around. Let's go, Bucks. Uh, get you fired up. This is going to be your final opening day and your final season of playing big league baseball. What do you anticipate when you take the ball here starting tomorrow and this entire season? Uh, well, I'm going to go out as another start, you know. Uh, first home game back is going to be important. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of emotions, but uh, still got to throw the ball and make my pitches. How about Garrett Cole? He's going to take the ball today in his first opening day start. Why should fans be excited about him and what he has to offer here for the coming years? Well, I think you see it every five days out of Cole, the way he competes. I mean, that's all I look at right now. He's got stuff, and he's got the mentality, you know, to be a good big leaguer. But the kid competes, man. That's what you want. Have a great day today, a great start tomorrow, and a great season. Thank you, man. Tim? Thank you very much, Robbie. AJ, when he was introduced earlier, got a great ovation from the fans here as he is back after spending last season in Philadelphia he will pitch tomorrow night against Shane Green in the second game of this three game set with the Detroit Tigers but the pitcher today Steve Garrett Cole a guy who is just 24 years of age makes his first start in this home opener environment what's he going to what's he going to expect today what's he going to go through well first of all the excitement the atmosphere uh, the opening day is, is special uh, he hasn't seen all that many of them. So one of the keys for him is not only enjoy it, look around, uh, embrace it, uh, take it all in, but then shut it down and get ready to pitch his ball game because he is going to have a real challenge today against what I think maybe is, is the best hitting team in all of baseball. So it's important for Garrett Cole to have his energy, have his adrenaline, but harness it, send it in the right direction, and you've got a good horse going for you for sure. Garrett Cole steps on the grass at PNC Park, leading the Buckos out. And here they come in a standing ovation from a capacity crowd. You need a shoehorn to get anybody else in here today. This is the way it should be. It's opening day. These fans have just risen to the occasion. They got here early. They've been hollering. They've been screaming. They are ready for the baseball season to start. It's almost like this is the start of the year. Forget about January 1st. We're going to start the year. We're going to start 2015 right now with the Pittsburgh Pirates and Garrett Cole and his buddies. I mean, just great. Garrett Cole coming off a great finish last year. So the numbers from his first start is no decision, but uh, he pitched well at the end of the year. He pitched well in this ballpark all year. And you can bet, I mean, th this is a stud. He's been ready to go uh, since he walked off the mound or left the, the game in his first start. So uh, it, it's going to be fun. But this whole theme is about Garrett Cole against the really good hitting Detroit Tigers. That, that's that's your theme. That's, I, I think that's going to determine the day. Well, the Tigers have put up 47 runs in their first six games. Let's take a look at their lineup. It's brought to you by Honda. Anthony Ghost leads off. And plays center field for Detroit. Ian Kinsler bats second. Miguel Cabrera, 313 average, 44 interleague home runs. He's played 201 interleague games. J.D. Martinez bats fourth. Joanna Cespedes in left field batting fifth. Nick Castellanos will play third base. Alex Avila, and Jose Iglesias, and Anibal Sanchez facing Garrett Cole in the first game at home this year for the Pirates. You know what they always say, Tim? 
good pitching will negate good hitting. Will good pitching negate great hitting? <laughs> that's that's the key. But this young man certainly is capable of shutting this team down. The Tigers come in a perfect six and oh, they swept the Minnesota Twins in their opening series. They're coming off a sweep of the Cleveland Indians. Anthony goes leading off and the first pitch at PNC Park is just inside for a ball. You can believe the there's some uh, adrenaline going through Garrett Cole as he faces Ghost here to get this thing started at PNC Park. And the 1 0 is slapped a short, broken bat. And there's one out. Gordy Mercer making the play. So the first batter Cole faces, he blows up his bat. That's a little frosting on the cake, isn't it? Defensively for the Pirates in the outfield, left to right, Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon, Gregory Polanco, Josh Harrison, Jordy Mercer, Neil Walker, Pedro Alvarez in the infield, Francisco Cervelli catching his first game in a Pirate uniform at home. And Andrew McCutcheon presented with his Silver Slugger Award. He and Neil Walker both, and uh, coincidentally both had three-run homers yesterday against Milwaukee in the 10-2 win over the Brewers at Miller Park. Walker again, another opening day for him in his hometown. 1 0 pitch to Kinsler. And ball one strike. And when you think about Garrett Cole working against this Detroit lineup, you think about getting out in front. I think that's that's the real key for, for any pitcher. But if he pitches out in front with his exceptional stuff, uh, that could go a long way. If he's behind in the count, uh, that sets up the table for these Detroit hitters. Two and one to Kinsler. Kinsler 11 for 25. 440 average. Tigers second baseman waits for the pitch and Garrett delivers a strike call. Two and two. Cole will use the fastball a lot. In fact, in his last start against Cincinnati, nearly 68% of the time he went to the fastball. You know, Tim, I had a chance to talk with Ray Searidge about this start for Garrett Cole. And Garrett Cole overall, I said, is there any particular percentage you're going with the, uh, the four seam fastball, the speed fastball, and the turnover fastball, the two seamer where you get more movement? He said, no, the game dictates that. They'll use both pitches and they'll use them as the game dictates the need. Oh, so close. Well, Bob Davidson, the home plate umpire. And that one. Barely nipped the corner and it was called a ball. So full count pitch now to Kinsler. Struck him out. Good start for Garrett Cole because now this tells you a little something about him in control and control of the emotions because you go out there and all kind of things flying around, but it gets him to chase a borderline pitch downstairs in the first two outs. Good start. Allegheny Health Network Super Mall showing us the pitch and the swing. Ian Kinsler is out, and now here is Miguel Cabrera. What a series he just had against the Cleveland Indians. He takes a strike. And even Miguel Cabrera is going to have trouble with 95 mile an hour heat at the knees. Great location. And he is behind in the count 0 and 2. Cabrera. First player in 20 years, first American leaguer in 86 years to have 11 hits and two home runs in a three game series that just completed in Cleveland. Big sweeping breaking ball. And he doesn't chase that if it's 1 0 instead of 0 and 1. So again, we talk about pitching out in front. He got the call on that first fastball. So Cabrera is behind in the county, chases the big breaker. 0 2 pitch on the right side out of play. Rivers Casino tips to win. Yep. It looks like we're uh, down the street a little bit. He is control. It looks like he's in control of his motion. He's not way out in front of himself. And uh, when we get to the bottom part of the inning, we'll talk about Annabelle Sanchez. In the air to center field. McCutcheon with lots of room. Garrett Cole sets the Tigers down in order in the top half of the first inning. Harrison Polanco McCutcheon coming up.
Leading off is Josh Harrison. Jay Hay facing Anibal Sanchez. It'll be Harrison, Polanco, and McCutcheon as we look at our Toyota lineup. Andrew McCutcheon yesterday, two for four. His first four run batted in game since July of 2013 as he had a three run homer and an RBI single. Walker also with a three run homer yesterday. And Marte, Alvarez, Cervelli, Mercer, and Garrett Cole. First pitch to Jay Hay coming from Sanchez. And he lifts it high and deep to right center field. Way back it goes. And it's gone. On the first pitch, Jay Hay makes it 1 0. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Who wrote the script? Up. You can't make it up. What a start. What a beginning. This place is absolutely electric. Gregory Polanco swings and hits one high to left field. You want to Cespedes to make the catch, and there's one down. Well, how are you liking that contract so far? Wow. <laughs> That's insane. We talked about a key to the game, making Sanchez get the ball upstairs. He did, and he paid the price. No place like home. No place like PNC Park and all of baseball. These fans in the reception lead this team coming back off the road trip. Here is Andrew McCutcheon. Two home runs, six runs batted in. You know, one pitch. Well, it's one and one to Kutch. Pirates with a one nothing lead. Anibal Sanchez in his first outing against Minnesota had shut them out into the seventh inning. Hadn't given up a run yet until the first pitch he threw in Pittsburgh. Well, that was like a lightning bolt in the middle of the day on a beautiful day where the sky is clear. A lightning bolt to right center field. Two ball one strike pitch from Sanchez. To Andrew McCutcheon. Which wants time and gets it. And he takes a strike and it's now two and two. <laughs> Just when you thought the crowd had settled down after one, two, three, top of the first inning. Bang. Josh Harrison with a solo shot to start things off. And McCutcheon takes inside. It's three and two. Facing 31 year old Anibal Sanchez in his fourth year with the Tigers. Signed an extension. We'll keep him there for a few more years. And the payoff pitch to McCutcheon. Strike three call. Two men out for the Bucks in the bottom of the first. Second baseman, number 18, Bill Rocker. Yep, you got that 50 50 call. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. That time they got it. Well, Sanchez will now face Neil Walker. Walker hit his first home run in the ninth inning. Pirates had a six run ninth against Milwaukee yesterday. And he follows this one off. And Walker got up the inning before in the eighth, Steve. Hit one probably the exact same distance, but the configuration of the outfield, he hit it to the deeper part in right center. Ryan Brown was able to go get it in front of the wall. And uh, talking with Neil after the game, he said the, the, he thought he hit the first one farther. One in the eighth inning. That was fun to watch. This one's popped up. 
twisting into the seats. You know, Tim, strike two. You guys are on the road, obviously, Thursday night, but we had a storm cell come through here Thursday night that was as intense and quick and abrupt as I've seen in a long time. And all I could think of when I saw that ball going out by Josh Harrison, that's how fast this thing just lit up. It, it, just, it just came upon us, that home run. <laughs> Last thing we were thinking about, and he goes deep. 0 oh, 2 and Walker to right field, a big hit. What a smooth stroke that was. Looking for another big year out of Walker. A little bit downstairs in the zone, but he's left his love it right about there. It's a sweet spot. And a sweet looking swing. Shift all you want uh, on that kind of ball, but unless you're right in front of it, it's going to be past you. It was hit that hard. Starling Marte with two outs and Walker at first. And a strike to Marte. A tough day yesterday. No strikeouts yesterday for Marte, and he was hit by a pitch. You know, you know those kind of games. There's always somebody doesn't get invited to the party. First Walker dives back. That was so refreshing. Ten runs. I mean, at the end of a trip, tough beginning of a trip, good ending. I think a, a game like that makes everybody relax. You'd love to win it one to nothing, two to nothing if, if uh, it goes in that direction. But bringing out the bats, I think everybody just takes a deep breath, say, okay, let's go home. We're ready. Closer at first base this time. Very close. Keep one hand on the bag while you bring the other one in. Stand up. Cabrera thought he might have tagged him on the back, and the Tigers are trying to determine whether or not they want to review it. Manager Brad Osmus. They have 30 seconds to do it. Don't have to come out this year and talk to the umpire. You can do it right from the dugout, but for the maximum amount of time of 30 seconds. Unless it's at the end of an inning or at the end of the game, it's got to be immediately. Marte, nothing in one. He takes up high. On Friday night, Marte hit a home run in Milwaukee. Might still be going. Boy, did he hammer that one? For his first long ball of the year. At first, two down, one run in on the home run by Harrison. And Marte pulls it foul. I just saw a fan with a Marte jersey. I was out on Federal Street before the ball game. <laughs> An incredible, wow. incredible percentage of pirate jerseys. I mean, it just it was black and gold all over the street. It was just uh, it's it's a it's a Pittsburgh Pirate Day in this city. What a great atmosphere on Federal Street prior to the game. <laughs> Amazing. All the way around the North Shore. It was tremendous. Still is. You know, just we went down to do some radio shows and, and that sort of thing. It was it was kind of neat just be just being a part of that, just getting in that in that mix and, and being amongst all those people. And people waving and hollering and saying hello. Well, there are some great cities that have opening day ceremonies great baseball towns but gotta tell you Steve we travel around we get to see just about all of them and nothing like this place. I'd say looks at one outside. It's great to see the Jolly Rogers waving again. Great to see all the folks in black and gold and the kids the kids the kids have embraced this team. And look at the rotunda it's, it's packed five six deep again today. It's a baseball party. 2 2 pitch. Marte takes inside, strike three call. Pirates get on the board. They get two hits, Walker with one, but on the first pitch, Josh Harrison goes to the opposite field for home run number one. And the Pirates, after a full inning, lead it one to nothing.
Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. By Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. And by PNC Bank, for the achiever in you. Let's go Bucks. On the UPMC scoreboard, 1-0. Pirates, Josh Harrison. It's a field home run. Here's Derek Cole in the Bucks, a 1-0 lead. Cole delivers to the right fielder, J.D. Martinez. And gets a strike in on him. Martinez batting in the fourth spot. Normally, Victor Martinez would be there in the Tiger lineup, but this being a National League game, Anibal Sanchez has to hit. And Victor Martinez only expected a pinch hit during this series. And that's okay. He is that good. Brad Osmus in his second year as manager. Former catcher. He's done very well in Detroit. He's taking over for Jim Leland. And he has inherited a very, very nice baseball team. <laughs> Jim Leland also here today. Yep. A lot of Pirate alumni gathered. Oh, swing and a miss. Two and two. Garrett Cole so far. Fastball 94-95. Breaking slider downstairs so far. He looks just fine early. 2 2 pitch to JD Martinez. That's outside. On opening day last week, JD Martinez hit a home run. He became the first player this season to have a home run. He's a two more cents. 3 2 pitch. Strike three call. Lock City. Two strikeouts for Cole. Right there. So Cole will now face Ioannis Cespedes. Cespedes had been with the Athletics and the Red Sox, now a Tiger. Ball one to him. Three infielders on the left side for the Pirates. You'll see a lot of that. A lot of shifting by the Bucks. One and one to Cespedes. Barrel Automotive, league leaders stat. Take a look at the Tigers' offense. <laughs> first, 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 and second and walks. <laughs> All they did was run out of categories because if you have more categories, you're going to see more of the same. One one pitch. A little oh, roller. Nice. Back to Cole. Two out. In on the hands. Right in on the hand. Just tied him up. Try to get the bat in toward the body so he could get something on the swing, but. That ball got there too quickly to do that. Every pitcher loves that. Just, just lock him up. Cole will now face the third baseman, Nick Castellanos. And he goes to right field out of play. Foul ball. Strike one. Now these two teams, Steve, since uh, they started playing each other in 2009 on a regular basis every year. At home, there's been a distinct home field advantage. The Pirates, in 13 games against the Tigers at home, are 10 and 3. The Tigers at Comerica Park are 8 and 2. Castellanos a base hit. Two out single. Well, we got him where we want him. Castellanos aboard. And the catcher, Alex Avila. And Garrett Cole made a pretty good looking pitch there and uh, give credit to Castellanos for getting down there and lifting it out in the left center. We just saw the hashtag Bucks booth. You can join us on Twitter. Get us right here in the booth. Tell us how you are spending opening day. How you're celebrating on opening day. Where you are, what you're doing. Get to some tweets later in the game. Pitch to Avila. Strike call. Sevilla has been an all-star. 
Now it's playing him to pull with the switch on with Neil Walker out into short right center field. Pretty good defensive catcher is Avila. He led the American League in runners caught last year with 36. And he's behind in the count, nothing in two. There's the shift. Hard to believe that that you shift a lot with Garrett Cole if you're expecting a guy to be a dead pull hitter. He throws so hard. They're hard to pull. Those guys are hard to turn on the ball and pull it. But uh, so many of them are committed to turning the swing early. And boy, the shift. Oh, two. Inside one and two. I was talking to Bob yesterday about guys who pull, and he said that when he was pitching, that's all he wanted to know for a scout in a port. Is he a pull hitter or does he want to go the other way against me? Is that something you were interested oh, in? Oh, yeah. Yep. You're always, you know. And, and most guys, there's a bunch of guys that will try to hit the ball at all fields, and those are guys who play honest. But yeah, you you always pitch to your strength, but you have that in the back of your head that, that if you, in certain situations, get down to instances, here's what a guy's going to try to do. So I will try to pitch to that. Blocked by Cervelli. You got to also make sure that you pitch to your defense, too. That uh, if somebody's going to try to pull the ball, uh, you can't go away all the time because you don't have much defensive support if they're going to if you're going to pitch them away and they're going to try to hit the ball away. But most times when they're dead pull hitters, they're committed. They're, they're not going to try to punch the ball the other way on a regular basis. Two outs, Castellanos at first and uh, two two pitch. A little bit low. That'll fill the count of a three and two. Derek Cole started in game two against Cincinnati on the road trip. Got a no decision. Last year, won his last four decisions, his last three home decisions. Payoff pitch runner goes. Ball is grounded to Neil Walker in short right field. He'll throw out a deal. No runs, one hit, one left. One nothing after an inning and a half. Pirates lead. Sky this Saturday at PNC Park. Watch the Pirates take on the Milwaukee Brewers at 7:05. Stay after for an amazing Zambelli fireworks show, courtesy of First Energy Solutions. Plus, every Saturday is an Eaton Park scratch and win Saturday. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. Big opening week here, Big opening day. Right now, one nothing Pirates with the lead. Josh Harrison a solo homer, and Pedro Alvarez up against Anibal Sanchez. One. Pedro has a pair of home runs on the season. Four runs batted in, hitting an even 300. Good start. Feel good start for Pedro. That's what the doctor ordered. 
Falls behind Sanchez 0 and 2. Pedro hit one in Milwaukee halfway up the batter's eye in center field. An absolute blast. Also had one in Cincinnati. And he goes down swinging. Third strikeout for Sanchez. And there's one down for the Pirates in the bottom of the second. The Penguins' quest for the cup begins on Root Sports. See the Pens battle the Rangers from Madison Square Garden in game one of their opening round of the playoffs this Thursday, starting at 6 with a special one hour pregame on Root Sports. Francisco Cervelli at the plate now with one out, nobody on. And he swings and goes to right field. That ball is going to hang up for J.D. Martinez. Pouliot, he's falling. Paul Martin, Penguins here taking in the game. Uh, it works both ways. You know, they uh, see a lot of us uh, during the winter time up in Sal. Good luck, you guys, starting Thursday. Knock those Rangers off. Big uh, shutout win against Buffalo the other day, guaranteeing them the, the, the spot that they the need. Flower, the flower came up big. Mark Andre. Jordy Mercer, the number eight hitter in the order. One pitch waved out and missed. And it's nothing in two. And that is uh, Annabelle Sanchez's trademark downstairs. Downstairs doesn't give up the long ball very much. Got the ball up to Josh Harrison, but he is downstairs. A lot of ground balls. Sinker. Yeah, that one's Once again, Jordy. downstairs. Tough pitch to take, tough pitch to do anything with. Mercer hit the two spot yesterday. He had an RBI single in the ninth inning. Ended up going two for five. Scored a couple of runs. Two outs and the 0-2 pitch. Jordy watches it upstairs. One ball and two strikes. Cole on deck. Mercer gets a moment. Animal Sanchez has the sign. Now the one-two. Mercer chops the foul. Sanchez, you may remember. Had a no hitter his rookie season back in 2006 with the Marlins against Arizona. He became the 19th rookie at the time in Major League Baseball to ever pitch a no hitter. How do you follow that up? You do that your first year. Tough act to follow. Twenty starts for Detroit last year, 85. Two stints on the disabled list. That's why he had that number of starts. What did you feel the ideal number of starts was for you in the season? Uh, well, five starters, 32, 33 in that range. You don't miss anything. Three balls, two strikes. It's unusual for a staff to have everybody make all their starts. Oh, yeah. Well, you don't keep a starting rotation intact the whole year. Uh, very, very seldom. OJ made his starts last year. Pitched through a hernia <laughs> for Philadelphia. Didn't miss a start. Did he have 32 or 33, something like that? And yeah, Mercer lines it to left field. That ball's going to get down for a hit. Third hit of the afternoon for the Pirates. Nice job going downstairs. has his third hit and four at bats. His two hits yesterday came in his last three at bats. And this gets Garrett Cole to the plate rather than leading off next inning. Mm -hmm. I got to talk to 
Jeff Branson. I, I want to see if I can get him to let all his pitchers on first pitch against fastball. Just give it a good rip. Get your money's worth. Because the odds are against you anyway. <laughs> He'll probably tell me to mind my own business, which is okay. Well, Friday, Jeff Locke ripped the fastball to deep right center in Milwaukee. Jeff uh, asked him the next day, did you think you had it? He goes, no, nah, I'm not going to get one of those. <laughs> but it almost went. Perfect ballpark for it. Strike to Garrett. Ball on two strikes for the Pirates pitcher. Who does have one career home run, hit it late in the year last year in Chicago. Popular spot for those one career home run totals. You know. As <laughs> Garrett Cole strikes out, no runs to hit a man left. On to the third. Pirates one, Tigers nothing. Right there in the center is Grandpa Adrian. Made the trek down five hours from Detroit, standing up along with cousins. Uh, Father Mark is there on the right, uh, wearing the great T-shirt, yapping away as he always does. Mom Sharon is here. A fantastic trip. We want to give a very special shout out. That's Sister Erin with Grandpa right there, saying hello. Uh, give a special shout out to Grandma Esther, who was unable to make the trip. She's watching the game back in Detroit. Garrett and the family say they miss you, Grandma Esther. But a great day, and one certainly that the Cole family won't forget. Now, Tim, uh, you know his mom, dad, and sister came all the way from California. Then dad went to pick up uh, Grandpa Adrian from Detroit to bring him down to the ball game. I'm certainly glad they did. Yeah, not exactly a short commute either, but uh, glad he did. And hopefully, Grandma Esther, Garrett gives you a good one today. Yep, a lot of pride up in that section. One nothing pirate lead. We start the third inning. Cole will face the shortstop, Jose Iglesias. Well, we've been able to catch our breath a little bit after that uh, very dramatic start to this game. It's to Iglesias, fouled off. Nothing in one. 526. So far, so good for Iglesias. He is 10 for 19. He's batting eighth. And one toward the middle. Walker will throw him out. What a play by Neil Walker. You talk about range and you talk about positioning, and they're one and the same. You know, it, it's kind of a signature play of his to go over toward second, up and back of second, and pass second on the left field side and make these plays, make these throws, come back across the body. And we've uh, really come to know that kind of a play from Neil Walker. Fun to watch. Makes it look so easy. Those are not easy plays to throw when you're off balance like that. Now the pitcher, Anibal Sanchez, takes strike one. 94 mile an hour heater. And Neil does cover a lot of ground, but you know the Pirates do so much work internally on where to position hitters. 
And Neil obviously has uh, seen a number of these guys in the past throughout the league and even Detroit playing them every year. <sighs> and he goes down looking. Hello and goodbye. So three strikeouts, two of them looking for Cole. On our first weekly edition of Inside Pirates Baseball, see why the Bucks may be equipped with the best offense in all of baseball. Here, Josh Harrison mic'd up during workouts and a whole lot more. It's Inside Pirates Baseball, presented by Allegheny Health Network. Today after post game on Root Sports. Busy concourse area here at PNC Park today. Back to the top of the order, Anthony Ghost. He grounded out to Jordy Mercer in the first inning. Lost a bat in the process as they exploded on him. We've got the percentages going with us, Tim. All time uh, openers 73 and 55. Plus number. We're going to pick up the pace a little bit here at PNC Park with 5 and 9. You know, it's not the first time they played Detroit in an opener, though. <laughs> I, knew, yeah, I knew that was good. You have to go back to 1888 on the 20th of April when the Pirates played the Detroit Wolverines. And they beat them 5 to 2. And that time, Garrett Cole was able to reach back and get a little bit as you take a look at the shrubbery coming in nicely. The home run wall and dead center field. Strike three. Side retired in order. Two of them by way of a strikeout. Four punch outs for Garrett Cole. Todd Rundgren coming to stage AE April 25th and uh, that's Steve dancing up here in the booth. Yeah, bang on the drum all day. <laughs> Good way to spend the day. It's one nothing pirate lead. Bottom of the third inning and Josh Harrison up for the second time Homer on the first pitch first time up. You now there are kids here Steve that 10 20 years from now will be telling somebody. Hey remember the opening day we we're at. When Josh Harrison hit a home run on the first pitch. First pitch. Opening day memories are very special. People have them coming to these games for years and years and years. And maybe for somebody it's their first. Maybe for somebody it's their tenth. But you always have memories about opening day. It's been fouled off. And it's one and two. And who's bringing the lumber? Already Josh Harrison bringing the lumber. Brought to you by Yellowwood. 
An opposite field smash for home run number one. A very auspicious beginning for the Pirates this afternoon. Two and two to Josh. He just made a mistake upstairs. You know, you never know, Josh. Okay, I'm going to go up here and I'm just going to take a shot, looking for a high fastball that he misses. It might be a little, little amped up. Uh, he's a sinker ball pitcher, but if he makes a mistake upstairs, I'm going to jump it, and he jumped it. And Park University tweets about Jay Hayes' home run last time up. They're on the bottom of your screen. Kinsler not going to get it. Jay Hayes aboard again. Good try by Kinsler, but it got under his body, then in back of him, and uh, at that point, it was over. These guys smell those base hits, those possibilities, and Josh hustled down first baseline. Knows he's got a chance, and knows he's got it done. Two for two. Well, Harrison Hort. Over. Yep. You know, uh, Steve, Josh joins an elite group of guys to hit a leadoff home run on opening day. The last Pirate to do it, R.J. Reynolds. 1986 off Dwight Gooden of the Mets. takes low. Gregory fly the left field first time. He's 0 for 1. Blanco hitting the leadoff spot yesterday. And he's hit safely in four of his first five games this year. Two for five with an RBI as the leadoff man yesterday afternoon. Josh getting back. Trying to find the times we don't see Josh smile as opposed <laughs> to the times we do. It's great to see him in Cincinnati with his family. This ball shot with oh, the first baseline. He was three quarters of the way to second base. He's going to stay there until they tell him to go back, probably. So good job. He's gone. <laughs> Sometimes you just take a shot. You say, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a risk here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume that he's getting a little careless. He's not gonna keep an eye on me." Well, we told you that Avila led the American League in runners thrown out last year with 36. So he's got a good arm, an accurate arm. Yeah, he wasn't gonna get him there. Got to have help from the pitchers. And Polanco belts it to right field. It's off the Clemente wall. Harrison is going to get held at third. Polanco is in with a double. Second and third. Nobody out. And that ball got out there in a hurry. A vapor trail. And I was just looking to see what kind of bounce that Martinez was going to get. He got a decent bounce. If it goes sideways at all, we got to run. But he just turns on this ball. And a good call by Rick Sofield to hold Harrison up at third base, and I'll tell you why. But that's what I was looking at. He was positioned for a bounce. It was decent. That's why they were able to hold up Harrison at third base. And why send him with nobody out, men on second and third? Don't risk it. That ball's blistered. Now, I have the feeling, Steve, that Gregory Polanco and the Clemente Wall are going to be very well acquainted often. Here's Kutch. Two men in scoring position. Great chance here. Ball one. But Harrison taking off. He knows that it's in play. And that was a good recovery by Martinez. Well, you just don't want to take the air out of this opportunity. Kutch into right field. And that ball will be fouled. Scored two. Yep. This is what's called loading up the hopper. One on second and third, and the man up at the plate. Andrew McCutcheon cut the dreadlocks off. Fifteen of them were sold for charity. <laughs> one one pitch. Now it's one and two.
Hutch took himself out late in Friday's game, sat out Saturday's game in Milwaukee. Performed very well yesterday. So he's got a sore knee and he's just going to battle through it. He said 80% of him is still okay. <laughs> Ball and two strikes to Andrew McCutcheon. He struck out looking in the first. Yeah, uh, just uh, against Andrew McCutcheon, uh, those kind of playing shallow in, in my way of thinking. There's a lot of grass in back of him. And shallow in left field, so uh, they're playing with fire a little bit. Let's see if Andrew can burn him. It's a ball hard to, to a gap. They're not going to have time because they're so close to cut anything off. Sanchez ready to deliver the one ball, two strike pitch. McCutcheon to right field and deep. This ball is going. And on the track, it is caught by J.D. Martinez. Harrison will score a sacrifice fly and an RBI from McCutcheon. It's 2 0. Almost. The wind is blowing out instead of across. It's got a chance. Andrew fights it off. It's a lot of distance. Fires that on. A good pitch on the outer half. That, Steve, is what McCutcheon saw yesterday off of Kyle Loesch. A pitch on the outer half, and he drove it the other way. Polanco advancing to third on the tag up. Tigers will play the infield in. One out. Neil Walker up. Walker one for one. Walker a good chance to get Polanco in here and add another run. Maxing out opportunities. This doesn't have to be pretty. Just do whatever you can to try to get this third run in. I'd like to do it uh, without the expense of an out. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can. Oh, one pitch. To first base. Here comes Polanco to the plate. And he's out. Running on contact. Miguel Cabrera just threw to Alex Avila. And no chance for Polanco. Walker aboard on the fielder's choice. And there are two men out. Cabrera makes a good pickup, a clean pickup that allows him the opportunity to make a, a, a decent throw without having to rush it right there. And there's a good good look at a really good defensive play by the guy who's known for his work with the bat. Cabrera makes that play by making that good pick. Good look from the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. Keep it on the short hop. Keeping Walker close at first base is Sanchez. Polanco with a double. Running on contact there and get thrown out. So, two men out. Marte struck out looking. And he drives one to right field. J.D. Martinez has room. He'll make the catch. Pirates get a run on two hits. They leave a man. Through three full of PNC Park. Pirates two, Tigers nothing.
most frightening Pirates plays at home. Don't miss what occurs when a ball and two players meet at the same time on Inside Pirates Baseball. Ten great plays at the plate Wednesday after postgame on Root Sports. New PMC scoreboard, 2-0 Pirates, two runs on five hits. Starting the top of the fourth inning with Steve Blass and Robbie Inspikowski. I'm Tim Neverett. Glad you're joining us for the home opener, no matter where you're watching. And our good friend, the president of PNC Park, Cy Holzer, here uh, on hand, as we would expect on opening day. Always good to see Cy. And really fine work on the uh, on the spring training broadcast, by the way, Cy. Really did well. Uh, Brown's in trouble. He's on the uh, endangered list right now. Ian Kinsler will lead off the fourth inning against Garrett Cole. Cole struck him out swinging in the first. Cole with four strikeouts to the first three innings. Fastball inside, 95 miles an hour. I think we can say it by now in the fourth inning. You're talking about Garrett Cole working and working very well. Contained aggression. Yeah. 1-1. One, one. Kinsler pulls a foul. We talked about the offense, Steve, of the Tigers coming into this one. And for the first six games, they're 6-0, and but they have won each game by three or more runs. Now, there was another team that did that. The 1927 Yankees began the season winning six in a row by three or more. And Kinsler down on strikes. Strikeout number five for Cole. There are two teams in the modern era who have done it. Cardinals and Phillies, but way back when. And Mr. Cole is just dealing right now. Not only the good stuff, he's throwing the ball pretty much where he wants to. He's ahead in the count. At this point, he's in control of the ball game. It's the fourth inning. But couldn't ask for much more to this point. Miguel Cabrera. Probably the most dangerous bat in baseball right there. Mm -hmm. This is the matchup, the individual matchup of the day, of course. I don't think there's any question of that. Cole Cabrera, two studs. 1-0 pitch, and Cabrera takes inside. One ball and one strike. Close pitch. That fastball sinking down, and you're not going to get too many close pitches when you get a guy of this stature. I mean, it's just the way it is. Well, Cabrera in the Cleveland series, 11 hits, two home runs. And you know, there was a Pittsburgh Pirate who had a series like that back in June of 1966 against Houston. The W.B. Mason strike zone, strike right at the knees. Perfected. That would be Mr. Stargell. Willie Stargell had 11 home runs, and, I mean, 11 hits, and three home runs in that series. Against the Astros in 66. There's another strike delivered to Cabrera. A little off speed action from Garrett. I just hope I was pitching one of those games when Willie went uh, that hot. Right on the corner, pitch number four. Look at the empty space in the hitting zone. Nothing there. 99 miles an hour. He he got, cranks it up. He got loose, didn't he? Searage, Pirates pitching coach, has to be happy with the velocity he's seen so far out of Garrett. Yeah, that, that's one. That's amped up. He knows he's pitching to Miguel Cabrera. He's got him two strikes. Let me see how hard I can throw it. That last one. 3 2 fouled up. We're talking about you pitching. Opening day starts. What does it feel like when you, get, you know you get the call? It, it's special. It really is special. That's Garrett Cole working on his opening day start. Cabrera was impressed. Yeah. 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 Garrett Cole has the wow factor. He does. So Cole winds and the payoff pitch. Cabrera fouls it off again. I didn't have the wow factor of my opening day starts. I had the I hope factor. But I had I had one one that I, I always remember. It was against Tom Seaver at Forbes Field. And he went nine, I went ten. We both left uh, with a two two ball game. And coming from spring training a month in the sun the next day. I had to crawl on my hands and knees to go get my coffee. <laughs> you're sore and you're tired. <laughs> it's just uh, when you come from that kind of climate and you've been working down there and it's nice and sunny, then at Forbes Field it was probably about high 40s, early 50s in terms of temperature. And you feel good when you're working, but the next day you realize I came from one climate into another. It's good to have three or four days off after that. But uh, that, that was good stuff going 10 on the opening day. Payoff again fouled off. You see, he's 
He's late right now because Garrett has shown him a couple off speed pitches and this is one of the best hitters in the game. And uh, they're liking this contest. They're liking it. And everything is down around the knees. Yep. Nothing in that hitting zone. And Cabrera doesn't want to be rushed. <laughs> Three two. Struck him out. With the breaking ball, the big sweeper. Six strikeouts for Garrett Cole. And that pitch was nowhere near the strike zone. And he got Cabrera to chase it. Nowhere near the strike zone. And I'll tell you, I don't care who you are as a pitcher. You love that when you go against one of the best, like a Cabrera. That is a little shot in the arm right there. Took 10 pitches, but he struck him out. A broken bat looper. McCutcheon running. And he will retire J.D. Martinez. How impressive was that? Two strikeouts and a broken bat. Seven in a row retired by Garrett Cole. Ball on Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks! Pedro Alvarez starts the bottom of the fourth. Taking a strike. Struck out swinging his first at bat of the second. Well, Sanchez dismissed him on three pitches. the 0 one that's inside I think if Detroit comes back and wins this thing Tim they will go back to the bottom of the third because the Pirates had really set up shop second and third nobody out Sanchez got away with minimal damage that was that was big because the Pirates were really set up Pedro swing and a miss Pedro set up the Pirates in the ninth yesterday when facing a shift like this uh, he's facing now he went to the opposite field down the third base side get a base hit and that started that ninth inning rally Two is down low. Two balls, two strikes to Pedro. Seems to be adjusting well to his new position at first base. Two two rolled on the ground toward first. Cabrera will toss to Sanchez and there's one out. Here's today's Allegheny Health Network injury update. Pirates won't have to face Justin Verlander this week due to a tricep injury. They will pitch at PNC Park Wednesday. He's scheduled to throw a simulated game. It's the right hander's first DL stint of his career. He has been exceptionally durable. Is he ever? JV, as he is known in Detroit. 
Justin Verlander. Almost threw a no hitter against the Pirates a couple of years ago in Detroit and it was broken up by Josh Harrison. I can say anything but JV. I think he's varsity. He's varsity. <laughs> There's uh, yeah, a little doubt. Francisco Cervelli lined out to right first time. Pittsburgh fans will come to know Cervelli. New Pirates catcher. He's done a pretty good job with the bat so far. Catch this one foul. Cervelli, five out of 15, hitting about 340. Now he tried to call timeout, did not get it. Does not have to be granted timeout. Yeah, and there's there's going to be some awkward moments with guys trying to. Call time or think they're being rushed or think they're being quick pitched. Uh, it, it becomes a rhythm between the batter and the pitcher in terms of timing when the, they expect the pitch to be delivered. Cervelli down on strikes, two away. Well, in the first series against Cincinnati, we saw Johnny Cueto quick pitch a few times. Well, you know, as you watch this replay, I thought Cueto was brilliant with the way he went back as he usually does to twist and, and face second base. Or coming quickly because what that does is, is speed up your action as a hitter. And he was very successful. I'm sure that's what that said in the girl's note to school. Uh, can't come to school today. I have buckle fever. A lot of that going around. A lot it's, of it's, cases of it. It's, uh, it's an epidemic around town today. Epidemic, contagious. And it's liable to last most of the season. It's usually a, a six month kind of a fever. Sometimes just maybe more baseball or more cowbell. Look at the gust of wind that just came up. Sanchez had to step off the mound. All of a sudden, it got windy. Yeah, and uh, all of a sudden, we're finding out how many hot dogs have been sold so far with wrappers flying all over the place. Yeah. All of a sudden, now you can just see it on the uniform of Mercer and also Sanchez, and then the hot dog wrapper Steve was talking about. And, and you're talking about a wind right now. If that wind was blowing when McCutcheon hit the ball, we'd have three more runs. And Troy came equipped today out there on Mount Troy, top of the batter's eye. He is never without the umbrella for sun, wind, rain, snow, and wind. One ball, one strike, two down, base is empty. He could start looking like Mary Poppins here in a minute if it gets any stronger. Let <laughs> me flying around the umbrella. Two strikes to Jordan. He's one for one. Wind blowing out to left field. And Mercer up in the air to right. Martinez backing up. He's got room. J.B. Martinez makes the catch, and the Pirates gone in order. On to the fifth at PNC Park. Two nothing Pirates.
here in the 15th season of PNC Park. I'm standing out in left field right by the Rivertown Brewing Hall of Fame Club where a multi-level uh, drink rail section has been added here. They've got sliding glass doors right here behind me. You can make your way in and out of the club. Any ticket holder to the ballpark can come out here, hang out, a little bit of standing room right here. There's also been a group area added over here to my left and to the right of the camera for groups of 25 or less. So if you want to host a group out here, hang out with beautiful views of the river and a beautiful view of the ball game, make sure you partake in that as well. I'm hearing it might be sold out for the entire season, but Tim and Steve, this is fantastic. You know, probably is the beautiful, most beautiful ballpark in all baseball to begin with, but now they've added the enhancements. They've made it even better for fans to enjoy the experience here at the ballpark. Yeah, incredible hey, work. Come on, I want to switch. Come on in here, Robbie. Okay, I'll, come I'll, on, I'll switch. switch with <laughs> Good luck finding a spot, man. There's a lot of people out here right now. Good stuff. Good fun. Robbie's having a more difficult time than normal getting around the ballpark. You want to First ball swinging, ground ball to Mercer. One pitch, one swing, one out in the Tigers' fifth. Cespedes 0 for 2. Yeah, they've done such a great job here with the additions and amenities in this ballpark. Fan experience yeah, here is, is tremendous. Uh, when this place is packed, it's different. Garrett Cole is different today. Well, he's not too different. You've seen him like this a lot. One base runner so far, the Castellanos base hit. One base runner against this Detroit lineup. Cole's pitch just missed off the corner. You're you're looking at him being very very good. You're also looking at what I think is a very kind of a smooth tempo, uh, a good a good flow body rhythm mechanics. It doesn't look like he's forcing anything. To right field, backing up Polanco. Two out. That ball is trying to dive down. It had that overspin on it. Nice job by Gregory of staying with that ball. Is trying to get on the grass. Some more tweets from Point Park University of your tweets at hashtag Bucks Booth. Getting to us, letting us know how you're spending your opening day, your thoughts about the Buckos. We can start the summer now. It feels like summer today. It really does. Two outs bases empty. Alex Avila, the hitter. Trying to bunt. Fila had a home run on opening day. First time in his career he'd done that. He did it against the Twins. Well, and also, that's, that's what tells you when you're going good, too, because he is so dominant right now. They're looking for ways to get on base. So he's trying to put a bunt down. From the rotunda. One and one. And we are in the top of the fifth, and Garrett Cole will be delivering his 60th pitch. So, on top of being very, very good, very dominant so far, he's been very efficient. Two balls and a strike to Avila. Two runs on five hits for the Pirates. No runs on one hit for Detroit. Tigers 6 and 0. Oh. They swept Minnesota, swept Cleveland before landing in Pittsburgh. Two one pitch. Off of Cervelli. Cervelli broke a mask on the road trip. He's on his uh, second mask of the season already. I saw that. That ball sounded like it came off home plate and bounced back up into the stands. Something. Not on, not on home plate. And off the glove and the off mask. Off the glove, yeah. yeah. Funny sound to it. You get something. Right there. I want that one. Let's see where that one was. Sometimes you can't always get what you want. You could have got it. His own. Bob Davidson, the veteran, behind the plate today. Jerry Lane is the crew chief. And Jerry's at second base today, and there's a walk. First one issue against the six strikeouts. Cervelli had a little bit of a reaction there. I think he had a reaction maybe back toward the last pitch. I was going to say, uh, my thinking was, yeah, 
we should not have had to throw that pitch right there. Shouldn't have come to that. But on we go. Jose Iglesias takes outside. Iglesias bounced out to Neil Walker in the third inning. Two nothing Pirates. Top of the fifth. Iglesias foul tips it into the glove of Cervelli. One ball and one strike. You know, batters can look for fastballs if they're if they're guessing right. And sometimes you say, well, if they guess right, they're going to get it. But they can guess right that it's going to be fastball. But if it's a great fastball in a really good spot, there's still not much you can do with it, even if you're on it. Slowly hit down to third. Jay Hay goes the short way, and that does it. No runs, no hits, one left. Garrett Cole will lead off when we come back. The Chevy Malibu and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks! Gorgeous day here on the North Shore. Go to the bottom of the fifth, 2 0. Pirates with the lead over the Tigers. Home opener. Steve Lass and Robbie Smikowski. I'm Tim Never. Garrett Cole at the plate to start things off against Anibal Sanchez. He takes a strike. Whole, whole lot of pitching going on. Sanchez got out of a, a big jam. Pirates are pitching a little bit better. There's the 0 1 pitch. And that is inside. And ball Sanchez, 31 years of age, makes his home in Coral Gables, Florida now. He's originally from Venezuela. He came just the second Venezuelan to throw a no hitter. Wilson Alvarez of the White Sox, the first. Very good control last year, just over a walk per start. Two and two. Sanchez, big part of this Detroit rotation. And strikes out Garrett Cole. Cole down on strikes twice. He's 0 for 2, and Josh Harrison will come up. First, let's take a look at our day automotive this day in Pirates history. 1963, the league decided to crack down on box. And on this date, the Pirates and Reds were called for a record seven in the Reds' 12 to 4 win. Pirates starter Bob Friend was called for four of the seven. Also in that game, Reds rookie second baseman Pete Rose had the first of his 4,256 hits in his fourth career game. Saw Bob Friend earlier today. Oh, yeah. One of the many yep. alumni get a chance to. Rub shoulders with on opening day. Yep. Hyde Park, our annual gathering. And uh, 
Bob Davidson, who uh, has called a number of box in his career. Oh, Bach and Bob, yep. Yep, saw Bob Friend and Grant Jackson, and Don Schwal today, John Candelaria, Dick Groat, Dick Groat, Elroy Face, Elroy Face, Barry Jones, and Jay Hay grounds out. Two men out for the Pirates in the fifth. Robbie showed us one of the new areas at PNC Park and in the rotunda another new area that has a big screen It's called the corner fans can gather they have refreshments available so another great use of the space in the rotunda down the left field line the ballpark just keeps getting better and better takes inside ball one Gregory one for two with a double Getting 280 on the young season two balls and no strikes two old pitch it's in for a strike breaking ball it was great to run into former Pirates. Mm. Dick Groat still amazes me. Yep. Very proud of his uh, alma mater, Duke University, winning the national championship. Dick's in the College Basketball Hall of Fame, was in the NBA with Fort Wayne, and of course, they didn't spend a day in the minor leagues. Sure. He's a tremendous baseball player, MVP in 1960. Check swing. They get the appeal from Hunter Wendelstead. Yeah, you come out of college and you play Major League Baseball, Major League Basketball in the NBA, MLB. No minor league time. He did his apprenticeship at Duke. <laughs> and off and running. Two outs, bases empty, 3 2 pitch from Sanchez. Gregory foul tips it into the glove of Avila striking out. Sanchez strikes out two. Pirates retired in order as we move ahead to the sixth inning. Great opening day shots from the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl in the first pierogi race of the year. Potato Pete somehow got on the course, but it was sauerkraut Saul edging out. Jalapeno Hannah. Yeah, that late kick did it. Two nothing Pirates starting the sixth inning. Garrett Cole facing the pitcher. Anibal Sanchez delivers a strike. This is perfect to have the pitcher leading off this part of the ballpark. Kind of 
you're past the early stuff, you're into the meat part of the ballpark, you can get by the sixth inning, you've really uh, set yourself up to uh, have yourself a strong finish, and he has been that strong. Control stuff. Uh, Gary Cole, he's got it all going for him. O2 struck him out. That was tidy. Strikeout number seven for Cole this afternoon. First kids' day of the season coming up this Sunday, Steve. The Bucks battle the Brewers at 135. And all kids 14 and younger receive a pair of Andrew McCutcheon socks. Compliments of Highmark. Come early for the number one Cochran Family Fun Zone on Federal Street. Afterwards, kids can run the bases. Presented by the original Pizza Logs. For tickets, go to Pirates.com. Can't see his socks today, but he's got some on. Oh yeah. Yep. Well, it was a fun kids, day at the ballpark. Well, the kids will get the socks on Sunday. Sunday afternoons. He's got himself Major League Baseball right there. Baseball. New signature on the baseball this year. New commissioner Rob Manfred. For the first time in a long time. You don't see the. Uh, the Bud Selig signature. The Alan the Selig. Alan Selig. Yep. We are seeing a signature performance by Garrett Cole right now. Dose is 0 for 2. Center fielder for the Tigers. Rounded to Mercer at short in the first. He struck out swinging in the third. 1 2. Got him. He's doing it. 95 mile an hour heat. And strikeout number 8. This might be as good as we've seen Garrett Cole in quite a while with what he's doing and who he's doing it against. This is one great hitting ball club. And Garrett Control is in control of this ball game. Cole will now face Ian Kinsler. He has struck out Kinsler twice, once swinging and once looking. Ball one to Kinsler. Right now it's classic baseball. Two pitchers on their game. Two men out. Base is empty for Detroit. Two balls and no strikes. Pirates got a run in the Bottom of the first, the first pitch Josh Harrison saw, he put into the right center field seats. Played it another run in the third when Harrison scored after a single. And the sacrifice fly by McCutcheon got him in. And Kinsler grounds out. Oregon's retired in order again. Two nothing but. By Chevrolet. Two nothing Bucks. Bottom of the sixth inning. Andrew McCutcheon will lead off against Anibal Sanchez. And let's revisit the Rivers Casino tips to win. Well, Garrett Cole has not only controlled his emotions, but he's got control over everything else. 
force Sanchez upstairs. He only has gone up there once or twice. Josh made him pay, and that's a big part of this ball game. He's back downstairs where he works successfully, and he is absolutely on his game too. This is two really good pitchers working. Sanchez facing McCutcheon. Cutch 0 for one. He struck out in the first. Scored Harrison in the third on a sacrifice fly. Seventh RBI for Cutch. Way out in front of the off-speed pitch. 68 miles an hour. That's what you call separation. Nothing in two. Now what do you come back with? Well, he's got everything set up after that kind of a delivery. And that's the frustrating thing for a pitcher. You, you really get successful with something really bizarre, and then you want to follow it up effectively, and he missed that. So it almost kind of wastes a little bit of that uh, effect that that 68 mile an hour off speed pitch had. That's just the one two foul. Andrew McCutcheon with his next home run at this ballpark will tie Jason Bay for the most number of homers at PNC with 61. One home run, uh, one RBI actually behind Bay, too. They had 241 RBIs here. Cutch has 240. Ooh. Went upstairs and got him. You see, there's a, a great classic example of a good pitcher working down, 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 having to look downstairs all the time, and then coming upstairs with a decent fastball, 91 miles an hour. But it's so much different looking than what everybody has been seeing, including Andrew. He's been seen stuff downstairs the sinker the breaking ball and that's a that's a, 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 an alarm factor that it, it looks so tempting and so unfamiliar you go up there and you don't get there in time even though it's uh, not 97 98 miles an hour he changed locations he came upstairs Josh burned him he got away with it with Andrew want to know to Neil Walker Walker's one for two and on base twice Going out to left field. Wind has picked up a bit. Two and one to Neil. It's two and two. Two different styles. Sanchez changing speeds constantly, showing different looks. Against the power of Garrett Cole, it's a, it's, it's an interesting game. If you're a, a fan of pitching, you're enjoying this. Both styles work. Walker slaps it to the left side. Iglesias, a nice pick, throws to first, and another nice pick. Boy, that was good on both ends. Iglesias almost overran the ball. He went deep into the hole and then had to go back across the body. That was a really, really good move. That ball had all kind of English and spin on it. So you see him going over for there for the backhand, and he almost gets past it. That's a great recovery right there. And then the long throw and the good pick. Both of those guys get circles for that one. Miguel Cabrera, named American League Player of the Week, and made a Player of the Week type play to finish that one off at first. National League Player of the Week just announced to Adrian Gonzalez of the Dodgers. Cabrera doesn't even know it yet. He'll find out when he goes in. He's been named AL Player of the Week. Up foul and out of play. Marte 0 for 2. Sanchez creating some awkward swings now. What kind of adjustments typically do you look to make as a pitcher third time through the order? 
Well, it, it, it depends. You can you can change things drastically, but if you're if you're tooling along with what's working, you don't change a darn thing. Uh, he's gotten into a groove now where he's got the guys uh, looking at something that they don't get or getting something they're not looking for. Or you want to phrase it, but uh, he's changing speeds and he's doing a lot of pitching right now. And the one two. And uh, my theory was if it's not broke, don't don't change it. And uh, if you are forced to make a change third time through. You might not be in there. You might not still be. In there. I was say, what happens if it does break? Yeah. Well, then uh, you, gotta make some yeah, maneuvers. you better make some before they get you out of there. So that can be that can be any time, whether it's the third time around. Uh, times have changed with that awareness. Uh, is it going to be different just because it's the third time around? See, there's Sanchez just just really pitching well. Martinez strikes out for the second time today. And Garrett Cole, he has been absolutely outstanding. He really has, throwing all his pitches very effective with a fastball today, I think. And when the breaking balls, he's keeping the breaking balls out of the strike zone. Uh, he's getting ahead of batters and forcing them to chase. It's just been a superior performance. Two, what, two base runners against this team? Strong yeah. stuff. Facing the American League Player of the Week for the first week of the season. So there was a strike. Miguel Cabrera is 0 for 2. Strikeout victim in the fourth inning. Fly to McCutcheon and center to end the first. On the corner for a strike. Certainly a challenging part of the lineup and a challenging part of the game. Inning number seven against the three, four, and five batters. That was paint at 97 miles an hour. Last time it was a, a 10 pitch at bat between these two and Cole won the battle and battling with Sanchez through six innings. Yep. That guy's got the upper hand, but they are both really pitching well, exceptionally well. And Garrett's, Garrett can do anything he wants now in this delivery. And there's a ball inside of first. Polanco will take it out of the corner and hold Cabrera to a base hit. And that's how good he is. Garrett Cole really out in front 0 and 2 Cabrera finds a way to get it down in the right field corner. Polanco over there to hold to a single. Just a little bit upstairs to let him extend. Garrett probably would like to have that one back when he was in such control of the at bat. Maybe uh, try to get him chase something a little bit further away down up out of the strike zone. 
is the second hit Cole has given up. J.D. Martinez batting in the cleanup spot today. Takes a strike. He's 0 for 2. Struck out looking in the second inning. Fly to center in the fourth. Nice to have Cabrera at first base. Get a ground ball now. You can just negate this whole top of the seventh. He's on second base. Well, you got to get some dangling uh, conditions. Not as tidy. The ground ball here it really, really would fit nicely. 01. Nothing in two. We had Martinez reaching for that one. Mm -hmm. Bob Prince used to say he couldn't hit that one with a bed slap. <laughs> that big sweeping breaking ball you see Garrett throw. We saw it early in the ball game on a strikeout. Can't remember which one he's had so many. But uh, very, very much out of the strike zone. Slider missed. Here, lesson learned from the 0 2 pitch to Cabrera. If I'm 0 2, if he wants to chase something really bad, I'll let him. I'm not going to tempt him with anything really close there. Well, if you can get strikes without throwing strikes, that's a, a big advantage. The old quote from Steve Carl I'm not going to throw strikes until they, until they force me to. <laughs> now the 1 2 from Cole. Hey, we see Francisco Liriano do that a lot. Yeah, strikes guys out. Yeah. You keep Three. chasing balls out of the strike zone. Why would I throw you strikes? This is a, this is a, a, a big at bat right here after the leadoff single in the top of the seventh. You only got a two nothing lead. Here's here's a guy somehow some way you want to get. This is a uh, a little uh, little drama at bat. And a little little pendulum kind of an at bat. Two balls and two strikes. Cole wanted that pitch. D. Martinez facing Cole. Nobody out. Man at first is Cabrera. And close, but called the ball. It's three and two. Now you got the, the pitch to this point, to my mind, the pitch of the ball game right here. Oh, no. Overly dramatize it, but uh, this half inning can go in one direction or the other right now. And he's walked him. Second walk issued by Cole and Martinez down to first base. Cabrera over to second. Let's see where this pitch really was. It's like a strike. So now the bullpen will get scrambled. Jared Hughes getting up. It's a big deal now. Now everything, uh, everything gets mixed up and muddied up right now because of that free pass after the after the base hit. Well, Garrett's been squeezed on a couple of pitches today that changed at bats drastically. MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service, celebrating 13 years. Watch every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Real time highlights, live look ins, pitch tracking widget, and more. Every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. Now you go back to that walk of Alex Avila in the fifth inning. Pitch just before ball four was a strike. At least according to our data, but Bob Davidson called it a ball and that put him at first. And this one to Martinez, a, a big item for ball four instead of strike three. You want to Cespedes the batter. And he takes a strike. Right in on the hands. Nice delivery. And you hope those things even out. Sometimes they have a tendency to even out when you get a pitch you want. Yep. And the thing is, you've got you've got to let it go. If you don't get it, and that delivery was a uh, uh, little indication of that. I thought good fastball right in on the hands. Start off this at bat. Cespedes has grounded out twice. Big wave and a miss. Sharp, sharp breaking ball. Unhittable breaking ball. And because you're out in front, 0 and 1, might get it. A 
the chase on that delivery. You know, we were talking about he's 0 2 against Cespedes, hasn't thrown a strike yet. Right. And he's been 0 2 on all three batters in this top of the seventh. Got a call on the first one. So nothing in two to Cespedes. Runners off first and second. Wow. <laughs> Francisco had to look in the glove there. See, okay, have I got it? I'm not so sure he knew that he had this ball in the glove. Turned the whole body around. That 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 pitch kind of carried his whole body around sideways. One and two to Cespedes. Now in terms of volume of, of those types of calls. One is one, another one is a couple. Didn't miss by much. There's one. And again, borderline. But again, it, it's gone. Runners off first and second. Nobody out. Two two pitch. Chopper down the third base side. That'll roll foul. And again, you, uh, those kind of calls, it, you're right. They can go either way. But boy, do you notice them more in the seventh inning of a 2 nothing ball game. And, and everybody does. And you as a pitcher out there, you're, you're trying to get it done here in the seventh inning. Uh, you've been on a, on a roll. It is frustrating. But when you have a borderline pitch and you don't get the call, that next pitch, it, it, does the previous call affect what you want from the catcher in terms of the sign he puts down? Well, you... you you might have a fleeting thought. Do I have to come back further into the strike zone? And, and that's kind of a trap. Still, you still want to try to make your pitches because you're going to get those calls. You're going to get some of them. You're not going to get all of them, but you're going to get your share as it goes along. But you don't want to give in and say, well, I have to throw the ball more into that strike zone, which is the hitting zone. 2-2. Two -two. Saspidus fouls it down the third base side. Oh, good catch. Good scoop by that young man. Look at this play. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, got it on the in-between hop. Good play. And this is a big pitch because you don't want to go 3-2. But then again, you don't want to go too far in the hitting zone to guarantee a strike. Sespedes lines it over the head of Mercer into left center field. Cabrera will stop at third base, and the Tigers have him loaded with nobody out. And nowhere to go for Cabrera. He had to wait and make sure that ball was going to get to the outfield. But boy, the plot thickens. Uh, this is going to end up doing it, I think, for Garrett Cole. Look at this base hit. What a great pitch. What a great at bat. Went down, got it. Tigers. Nowhere to go. Dave Clark, third base coach. Cabrera, right here. Standing for Garrett Cole as he exits. His family loves it. His granddad loves it. Two nothing Pirates. Jared Hughes coming on.
Series on Root Sports is presented by Chevrolet. Two runs on five hits for the Pirates. No runs on three hits for the Tigers as Garrett Cole exits. Tigers with the bases loaded in a tough spot for Jared Hughes, the sinker baller. As the Bucks hope that he can induce a double play ball here. Well, here's here's the deal. Uh, everybody in the Detroit dugout knows what his game is down the stairs. So he's got to throw the sinking fastball just high enough where they're going to chase because if it's down underneath, they know it's going to sink down and become ball one, ball two. So he's got to be downstairs, but he can't be too far downstairs to fall behind. Third baseman Nick Castellanos. He swings, it's a ground ball to Mercer. Mercer goes to Walker for one, back to first, double play. Yeah, there you go. Cabrera scores, it's two to one. How about that? One pitch. And you got a good bit of this cleaned up. This is our Chick fil A double play. Mercer, that's a tough play when you have to go to your right like that and plant. Yep, you got to plant and you got to get it over to Neil Walker where he can handle it on the pivot. Well, Detroit on the board, but. Two men out now. Tying run is at third. Batter is Avila. And the Tiger catcher takes strike one. Jared pitched yesterday in Milwaukee. Retired three of the four batters that he faced. He did issue a walk. But had a very good hitless and scoreless inning of relief otherwise. There's the 0-1. And Avila pops it up. Third baseman Josh Harrison under it. What a job by Jared Hughes. Jay Hay makes the play. As Jared Hughes fills the prescription. He comes out of the bullpen on the first pitch, gets what he wants. How about that? He got it up a little bit, but he got it far enough inside. So he had downward movement and a little inward movement. Created the ground ball and Jared Hughes. Just what the doctor ordered. Seventh inning stretch. Take me out to the ball game. A job by Jared Hughes. Unbelievable. Terrific. Ground ball pop up. And uh, not only uh, maintains the lead, but protects the line for Garrett Cole. Six plus a run on three hits, two walks, eight strikeouts. And Pedro hits one deep to right center field. Oh, Toro strikes again. Yard and it's three to one. Wow! If you bought a ticket today, 
you are getting your money's worth. You're seeing a whole lot of aspects of this Pittsburgh Pirate baseball team. You're seeing pitching. You're seeing them turn a great double play, and you're seeing them hit the ball over the fence. Cervelli off the goal Perfect. of Castellanos for a base hit. Perfect. Good start for Pedro. Three home runs now. Five uh, RBIs. Go upstairs on him. At some point, you're going to get burned. It sounds different. It flies different. And it goes further different. Pedro, great reaction. He wants to win more than anybody. He works exceptionally hard and has worked exceptionally hard at adjusting to his new position, worked exceptionally hard this offseason and improving the hitting. Mercer bunts this one right back to Sanchez. Sacrifice bunt for Jordy. And over to second base is Cervelli. See another one of the newcomers, Corey Hart, pinch hit. Corey Hart is two for two as a pinch hitter, and he's only seen two pitches. He's also driven in two runs, and he comes up with a man in scoring position. We'll see if he swings at the first pitch. Thinking first pitch fastball, maybe. Jordy getting the job done. Garrett Cole leaves with a lead. And he is the pitcher of record right now. Corey Hart, former Brewer, last year with the Mariners. Looks at ball one. Corey had a real nice reception in Milwaukee over the weekend. Spent nine years with the Brewers. He said so far his best memories in baseball were in Milwaukee. Smart oh, it's time for new memories. I was saying smart to choose the word so far. Yeah. Might have some new ones this year. Sure he will. 1-0 pitch from Sanchez. And Corey Hart drills one deep to left center. Tore the notch. Goal! A pitch hit! Home run for Corey Hart! Corey Hart making new memories. Fourth career pinch hit home run for Corey Hart. And as a pinch hitter for the Pirates, he is now three for three with four RBIs. Have a heart. Have yourself a heart. Brad Osmus lifting Anibal Sanchez. Pirates with a five to one lead. Monday, Monday. So good to down and in and out. Just went down and got the lift. Pirates going long ball. To the deepest part of the yard. Nothing like the view from the on-deck circle. Who's liking it? Every Pirate fan a pirate third baseman. But how quickly he can turn Garrett Cole and Anibal Sanchez in total control of this ball game and then all of a sudden the bats wake up. Especially it is the buckle bats. Five to one pirates in the bottom of the seventh. Let's go back to the studio for the State Farm game break. Welcome 
to Pittsburgh. It's a great way on opening day for Corey Hart to ingratiate himself with these fans. Brad Osmus has had to relieve Anibal Sanchez of duty. And coming on now is Al Albuquerque. Will face Jay Hay. One out, base is empty. As the Pirates get two home runs this inning, one from Pedro and another from Hart. Jay takes up an in from Albuquerque. Josh, the first inning, first pitch home run, bottom of the first. He's two for three today. Scored two of the five pirate runs. Wind kicking up again around PNC Park. You can hear it. And pitch to Jay Hayes, a strike on the corner. Corey Hart looking out to the north side notch. Welcome to Pittsburgh. He's right. I mean, he didn't just hit one over the short part down 325 and left. <laughs> hit it way over the 410 mark. We have seen him hit some long home runs as a brewer, and Jay Hay pops this one up. Shallow left center field. The initial. And making the catch is Anthony Gos. Be an issue because that ball carrying away from the shortstop of that trailing win. Yeah, and uh, Corey Hart had a trailing win too, but he hit it all. It was going to be at least two bases, yeah. so maybe a little bit of lip, but it was more of a line drive. Tony Watson getting up. Tony will pitch the eighth. Gregory Polanco doubled off the Clemente wall in the third inning. Two men out. And Gregory hammers one. Foul. Pulled it. Almost like he did in the third inning. He was all over that pitch, just a little bit out in front. Third inning. That was a rocket double off the wall. One pitch. Now it's nothing in two. Albuquerque came in on it. Pirates breaking out the long ball last couple days. That's okay. That, that's more than okay. We like them. Yep. And a swing and a miss. Polanco down on strikes. Big inning for the Pirates. Three runs come in as Corey Hart and Pedro Alvarez go deep. El Toro strikes for the third time this year. And Corey Hart is first as a Pittsburgh Pirate.
day and a beautiful day and we are with one happy mom right now now her son hasn't gotten the game yet this is venetia lambo andrew lambo's mother watching her son here in a big league ball game for the first time ever now you've seen him in indianapolis and playing other minor league cities what's this experience like for you on opening day it's absolutely overwhelming i i called my husband drew i wish she could be here but it truly is is wonderful your husband is uh, out in California. Take care, Andrew's dog. Now, you're wearing a button of Andrew playing for the Pirates. What's the story behind that? Well, the story is that on his birth certificate, he wasn't old enough to be a pirate. So we had to kind of fudge on his birth certificate so he could be a pirate. So and now he'll kill me for wearing this. He's going to be so mad. Well, guess what? There's a, probably a good chance he finds out because you just told the story on television. <laughs> Tim, Steve, how about this? Talk about the pride, Joy. She's jumping with everything that happens in this ball game. You can't contain your emotions. Why? I can't because I'm so excited. This is a thrill for me as a mother, and I couldn't be happier. And I'm blessed, and I'm just happy to be here. Fantastic stuff, Tim. Well, tell her not to worry. I think the statute of limitations has run out on that. <laughs> deal. That's, but that was uh, just before Andrew could grow a beard. By the way, that's a proud mom right there. Tony Watson takes over in the eighth, facing the shortstop Jose Iglesias on one pitch to right field. Polanco drifting, still drifting, going back, leaps and makes the catch. And he's going the Pirates' way right now. And uh, kind of happy that the wind wasn't blowing out there. Just had some carry on it. Yeah, Gregory didn't put on it. Allegheny Health Network Super Mall. Good shot of that swing. Great shot of this catch. Gregory Polanco with some defense, and there's one out. And Rajay Davis will hit in the nine spot. This pinch hitting for Albuquerque. And he follows this one off, and it's nothing in two. Sean Rodriguez is in at first base, and this is something that we have seen in the late innings of games so far this year. Pedro will come out when the Pirates have a lead like this. If it's a much closer game, Pedro will stay in for one swing of the bat, perhaps. And Davis out on strikes. Two down and overmatched. But the Pirates really like the defense of Sean Rodriguez, so that's why he comes in late. No way to get upstairs in time to make contact with that fastball. The Tigers, number 26. So Ghost will be out of the game. This will be Hernan Perez who will pinch it. So Perez pinch hitting for Ghost. And pitch from Watson is in for a strike. Left hander Ian Kroll warming up for Detroit. And a miss, strike two. Well, how do you like this part bullpen so far this afternoon? <laughs> so far. Well, and so far so good. And sometime during the homestand, people will get a, a, a load of Archimedes Caminero in person and his flame throwing ability. One and two. Tony yesterday faced some guys in the eighth, faced three, got him out, faces three here today. He gets them up. Head to the bottom of the eighth, 5 1, Bucko lead.
The Nissan Road ahead. Two more with these Tigers tomorrow night. Pre-game show here on Root Sports. Brought to you by W.B. Mason. Shane Green and A.J. Burnett. And then Wednesday night, Francisco Liriano slots in for the rotation behind Burnett now. He is back from paternity leave. He'll face former Cincinnati Red Alfredo Simon. Opening week. Yeah, good to catch up with you guys, Tim. After you opened on the road, didn't see you after the, the Florida session. Good to be back with the with the crew. Yeah, this is uh, a better day. This day makes up for all three bad days in Cincinnati. Yeah, that, that was a mess. That was, that was a mess. Left to Ian Kroll on the hill, pitching the bottom of the eighth for Detroit. Oh, gotcha. One ball, one strike. Jay Davis stays in the ball game. Good center field. Kroll was with the Nationals and was in the deal where the Tigers sent Doug Fister to the Nationals. Kroll came the other way, originally with the A's. Stay away from that left knee, we Mr. Kroll. You don't want to need uh, more conversation about Andrew's knee at this point. 2-1 pitch to McCutcheon. Foul. Andrew looking for a hit today, but he does have a run batted in. He leads the club with seven. Cole made a career high 45 appearances last year with Detroit. And his 2-2. He swung on and yanked foul. Tell you, you do not have to get much of the ball to get it out of here in left field if you uh, stay away from the big part of left field. Corey Hart didn't need any help with his, but still significant uh, air heading in that direction. Still sun splashed. We're expecting some showers later in the day, but not to affect this ball game. 2 2 to right field. That ball is going to get down for a hit. Lead off single for Andrew McCutcheon in the bottom of the eighth. in that strike zone. It's even hard for the Allegheny Health Network Supermo to slow down the hands of McCutcheon. <laughs> He's got such fast hands. Always reminds me of the story that former Pirate outfielder Matt Diaz told me. Is he and McCutcheon from the same area of Florida? And Diaz older than McCutcheon. And he had a hitting school when he first started to become a pro. Cut was in the eighth grade. As this one is popped up by Walker. Second baseman Kinsler will give way to Rajay Davis. He makes the catch. And McCutcheon's dad took Andrew over to see Matt Diaz to teach him how to hit, work with him at hitting. He had one lesson, and Matt says he told Andrew's dad, I can't do anything with him. His hands are faster than mine right now. I can't make him any better. <laughs> well, that was when he was in the eighth grade. Saved, saved the family some money for hitting lessons and uh, got a message that was pretty nice to hear. One on and one out for Marte. It'd be good to see Marte going after yesterday and today. Struggled a bit and struck out six times over the last two games. Still time for him to join today's party. Runs on nine hits for the Pirates. Three of those nine home runs. Harrison, Alvarez, and Hart. Didn't I hear somebody say that uh, in spring training we're going to have a stronger bench? A little indication of that today. Yeah. Clint Ertl says this is the ben best bench Pirates have had since he's been the manager here. Oh, one. It's a little bit late. Very late on that swing. Ho Gun is on deck. He would hit in what was the pitcher's spot where Jared Hughes or, or Tony Watson was slotted in. Big part. And Starling just searching, just trying to find that swing, find that timing. 
Oh, two now to Marte from Kroll. Pops it up right side. It's going to be a long run for Kinsler. On the foul ground, he makes the grab. And Marte is over four. And now the PNC Park debut. We'll see Scahill and Melanson up in the bullpen. PNC Park debut of Jung Ho Dong. Dong had his first major league hit yesterday, and he could have had more if it weren't for the defense of Aramis Ramirez at third base. And Gene Segura at shortstop. Dong might have had three hits yesterday, but ended up with just the one. Everybody in Pittsburgh curious as to what they're going to see from this young man from Korea. Three Korean players in the major leagues. Shin Soo Chu of the Rangers. Han Jin Ryu, the pitcher of the Dodgers. And now Jung Ho Gung with the Pirates. And he taps this one foul. The difference with Gung is that he is the first player who is a star in the KBO, the Korean baseball organization, their major leagues. To come and play in these major leagues. Shin Su Chu is a position player, but he didn't play in the KBO. Everybody wants a pitcher. Nothing in two. Two down. And gun. Uh, ground ball to Kinsler. Can't take care of that. No runs to hit a man left. On to the ninth inning. Pirates leading it. Five to one. Home opener at PNC Park and it has been a tremendous one so far three outs to go for the Pirates to send the fans home happy and certainly been happy with what they've seen home runs by Harrison Alvarez Corey Hart in a pinch hitting roll terrific pitching by Garrett Cole today and the bullpen holding this team to three hits to this point is absolutely terrific just want to keep it going put the lid on it they're a good, good candidate to do just that. Mark Melanson looking for a save. Not going to be a save. We'll have to look another game. Yeah. <laughs> Say, I, I, I don't want him to be any closer than, than five to one right now. Well, that's why Scahill was up also. But Melanson pitching here at home. And he's going to have to earn it. Top part of the Detroit batting order. And Mark was up yesterday. And then the ninth inning got out of control. Pirates would put six runs up. They'd win it 10 to 2. 
So he didn't have to pitch at that point in time. So broken bat roller down the first base side for Kinsley. So again, as a manager, Clint Hurdle's got to find spots for Melanson, and this is one of those spots. They keep pitching him regularly. And we all know Mark Melanson loves to work that cutter out away to right-hand batters. Probably National League uh, uh, hitters probably more familiar with that approach. As you take a look at what's the next challenge for Mark. Kinsler down to third. That's past Jay Hay in the foul ground. And around first and heading to second. The throw from Marte. Got away from Walker. And they had a legitimate chance to get him. Marte's got that kind of arm. Bounces further away or carries all the way without a bounce. The chances of getting that out at second base are increased. Gets it inside the chalk down for the left field corner, but it catches the stands. Great shot by the Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl. And this gets interesting at second base. And now Cabrera. Cabrera is one for three. Single and a run score. Takes a strike from Melanson. Nice to have the luxury of four runs so you don't have to be overly concerned with Kinsler at second base. Here's the issue right now against one of the best. You got to finish him off. A couple of teams had other teams on the ropes yesterday, couldn't finish him off. The Rockies were leading the Cubs, and the Cubs got a home run from Dexter Fowler late. And the A's and Mariners had an interesting one. And this one to the left field corner. And Kinsler's going to come in to score. Heading to second base is Cabrera. And again, a play that would have resulted in an out does not. And back to back doubles put a run on the board. It's now 5 to 2. And starting to get much more interesting than we need it to be. Both of these pitches, these doubles, pitches inside that the Detroit hitters have turned on. And, oh, a really good chance. Cabrera with a bad decision there, but he got away with it. His run is really not significant. He took the chance, and he won. Martinez at the plate. If the throw's there oh, and the catch is made, yep. that's a dead duck. Neal comes down a little early. You want to you want to stop this momentum right now. Get an out, some kind of way. Doesn't have to be pretty. Just get a out. A strike on the corner. One ball and one strike. J.D. Martinez, 0 for 2. Struck out, popped up the center. He walked in the seventh inning. Miguel Cabrera, with double number three. Is at second base. Nobody out. One run is in for Detroit in the ninth. Such a dangerous lineup. To right field. And this one is deep and this one is gone. J.D. Martinez, an opposite field home run. And it's getting close to nail biting time. <laughs> it's there. Three straight extra base hits, including a home run. The fourth home run for J.D. Martinez. Five to four. Right in the outside part of the strike zone, and just a lot of carry to the short part of this ballpark, right over the 320 sign. And now we're going to take a, a deep time out. Let's see if we can find some outs. Well, we were talking about the A's and Mariners. This is what they did yesterday. The A's came back from four runs down, tied it, forced extra innings. The Mariners would end up winning, but. Don't want that today. Well, as you see, the Bucks are back. So are free shirt Fridays. This Friday, the Pirates take on the Milwaukee Brewers at 7.05.
Be one of the first 20,000 through the gates and receive a free Pirates t-shirt presented by Point Park University. For tickets, go to pirates.com slash free shirt Friday. Right, let's start from scratch again here. Okay, that, that stopped every no lingering base runners. We've still got a one run lead. Let's start this top of the ninth all over again. Cespedes takes a strike. Cespedes one for three. Pirates bullpen is active. Scahill back up. The left hander is Antonio Bastardo. No one is here. Nothing in two. I mean, that one a little dangerous. A breaking ball, a good breaking ball, but the inside part of the plate, these guys are that good. Most times you want that breaking ball a little further outside. It might have been far enough inside. Two pitch down to third and into left field. And Mark Melanson is getting touched up here in the ninth. The tying run is aboard with nobody out. And now Castellanos, and we want exactly from him what we got last at bat when Jared Hughes got him to ground into the double play. Pirates started this inning leading five to one. It's now five to four. And now uh, you don't have the luxury of a lot of runs, so you have to. You, you, you can't get careless with the guy at first base. He's the tying run. Pitch to Castellanos and a ground ball to third. Jay Head Walker. Yeah, that's that's two. That's it. That's what the doctor ordered. Wow. Five, four, three. Everybody can breathe. AJ Burnett takes the mound for the Pirates tomorrow as they continue this home opening series against the Tigers. We'll bring you all the action from PNC Park starting at 6:30 with Pirates pregame presented by WB Mason. AJ against Shane Green tomorrow, game two. And Nick Castellanos just in the nick of time, both in the seventh and now in the ninth. Two ground balls for double plays. Everybody's up. Sellout house on their feet at PNC Park. One out to go. And pinch hitting will be Victor Martinez. Normally the designated hitter regularly in the lineup for the Tigers, but the fact that this is interleague and in the National League Park, he's relegated to pinch hitting duty. He will hit for Alex Avila. The high anxiety. Pirates trying to hand the Tigers their first loss of the season. And Victor Martinez, very tough customer. Mark Melanson trying to get him out. All one. Martinez. 0 for 2 yesterday against Cleveland. And led the American League last year and on base percentage. 409. It's on base a lot. And a strike and it's one and one. And the parrot's nervous. One outside, two balls and a strike to Victor Martinez. See Mark Melanson trying to keep away from that right field wall, trying to keep the ball away. Yeah, these kind of outings just got to keep grinding as long as you're out there. Victor Martinez finished second in voting in the American League Most Valuable Player award last year, and just off the plate, it's three and one. That one not close. You can see he's trying to keep away from that pull power. Nothing inside yet. I don't think you're going to see anything inside. 
Martinez fouls it off and the count is full. Three balls, two strikes. Two outs, base is empty. Two doubles and a home run this inning for the Tigers. They have closed the gap to one run. And about 38, 39,000 people up on their feet right now. Add one. Add two. Payoff pitch. Got him. Strike three. Oh, what a finish! The Buckos hang on and defeat the Tigers. Win the home opener. For the 74th time, 74 and 55 at home openers. Pirates now three and four. And the Tigers have suffered their first loss of the season. We